Welcome back. The great Orbachs from the University of Guelph joins us today to talk about what the night sky holds for us this month. Obviously, the weather today and this week doesn't look great for looking up in the sky, but what can people expect this month? Well, this is this is the thing. How come every time I come here, you, you bring <laughs> clouds every single time? I was ready to, to announce all types of exciting things in the night sky, and it's all cloud cover, it seems. It's Steve Ruddock's fault today. Ah, oh, geez, Louise. Yeah. Well, Saturday, uh, well, 12th and 13th, we're coming up on our annual, the biggest meteor shower of the year, which is the Perseids meteor shower. So the Perseids uh, occurs when we actually pass through the debris left over by a comet every single year. Same one that we annually pass through and they burn up in our atmosphere. So we are in a very good position this year based on the fact that we're in between the two full moons. So it's going to be a pretty dark sky that we're actually going to be able to see maybe up to 60 meteors an hour in the night sky shooting stars. Oh, well, where are the best spots to, to see what you're talking about. Well, this is always the thing. Apparently not here if we're in completely in cloud cover, but that's that's thing. Anyway, getting away from the city is obviously better. Um, it's in the northeast. It's a little bit high. So uh, even with a little bit of the light pollution that we typically get around the horizon, you should still be able to see it deeper into the night. Um, but yeah, definitely getting out of the city is always a, a useful move. And with them up to 60 meters an hour, kind of just getting outside and then taking a night to go do that uh, it should be exciting for anybody. Now, are you talking about you can see this meteor shower with the naked eye yep, or do you need yep. do you need something? No, no, no. This is you should be able just to see it with the with the unaided eye just looking up towards the northeast. Uh, it's called the Perseids because the radiant, which is where the meteors emanate from, is in the constellation Perseus. So if you have any sort of app uh, like Skyview is one of them uh, that helps to show you where the stars are in the sky, just look for the constellation Perseus and you should be looking there in the northeast. All right, what else is coming up? Uh, August 27th, we have a Saturn in opposition. Opposition just simply means that it's opposite the sun from where we are on Earth, which uh, means it's the most illuminated that it'll be all year. Look, there it is. And so on the second and third on the 30th, Saturn is going to be right next to the full moon. So you'll be able to see the two side by side. But on the 27th, it'll be so illuminated and in the night sky all evening long that even if you have a pair of binoculars or a, a higher range telescope, you should be able to see not just Saturn, but even you might be able to see its rings and even possibly some of its moons. How, how rare is that to see that? I, well, well, based on the cloud cover that we've had recently, uh, fairly rare. <laughs> but, but no, I, these, these plants will go into opposition yearly, uh, finding them in their brightest spot. Um, but again, you know, you're sort of limited to the time of year and how the weather is when you look up. So one of the things that I like to do with our monthly stargazing videos, which you can find on the Guelph Physics YouTube channel, is to tell people what's coming up so they can at least have an opportunity to get out, try to take a look up, and try to see what's happening. Is that the stargazing? Stargazing guide. Yes. Can you so tell us a, a little about that. So I do a, a monthly stargazing guide through the Department of Physics at the University of Guelph. And what I try to do, if, you, if you're like me, uh, you know, you always found out about things like these meteor showers the day after. Or did you see that solar eclipse yesterday? It's like, no, I didn't know about it. It's of course because nobody <laughs> we never see it. So what I tried to do was I wanted to make a stargazing guide that told you what was happening in our area. So uh, uh, Cambridge, Kitchener-Waterloo, Guelph, Hamilton, Niagara Falls, this whole region of Ontario, I do a monthly stargazing guide that tells you what's coming up, what to expect to see, and uh, dates that you can kind of check off in your calendar to take some time and maybe take some junior scientists in your life outdoors and take a look up in the sky. Now you touched on light pollution a little bit. How far do people need to get out of town to kind of get away from that? Well, you know, it really depends. Uh, uh, <laughs> The more and more I'm learning about physical astronomy, the more and more I'm finding uh, uh, that there's so much that has to do with not just light pollution, but the, the temperature, the humidity, the heat. Uh, the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada has groups in many major cities or close to major cities. So if you're really interested in going out and getting some hands-on astronomy advice, they have the groups that get together just reach out. They have star parties all the time and they're always looking to help people out and try to show them how to use telescopes and what they can see and the best places in your region to actually see the stars. People of all ages? Of all ages, from right. 8 to 80. <laughs> all right, <laughs> perfect. Thank you very much Fantastic. for your time, Burnaby. Take care. Enjoy looking at the night sky this month.